today, Sarah's Weeknight Meals is all about pot. No, not that kind. I'm talking about casseroles. Dutch ovens, whatever you call them, they're the perfect vessel for a trio of cozy winter dishes. Ta-da! There you go. We'll start small with some adorable personal casseroles filled with penne, fontina, and prosciutto. Think about this. You pop it in the oven and 15 minutes later you get this prize. This wonderful, personal pasta, crispy on the top, creamy on the bottom, deeply flavored. Then a super chef smackdown with the mother of all casseroles, the cassoulet. Mine is fast enough for a weeknight full of crispy chicken and smoky kielbasa, and inspired by her. This is Julia Child. Bon appétit. My buddy Ming Tsai comes in with his own version. We are making Asian ginger orange Cassoulet. Cassoulet. Cassoulet in quotes. Cassoulet. So cassoulet usually has beans. Right. So my bean is the edamame. He's right. It's all about the beans. So on Ask Sarah. I was just really interested to have your opinion on this, what I call my bean conundrum. Million dollar question. It's all coming up on Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Welcome to Sarah's Weeknight Meals. You know, if there's anything more lovable than boiled pasta in a sauce, it's baked pasta in a sauce because it gets all crispy on top and creamy underneath. The only trouble with baked pasta is it's hard to get the pasta part of it right. If you boil it ahead of time, it's soggy. If you put it in dry, it never gets tender. I have a secret. I'm going to take some warm water here and add salt till it tastes salty. Let me tell you what I'm making. I'm making baked penne and fontina with prosciutto. Then we're going to add 10 ounces of penne pasta. In this goes. Okay, so we're going to set that aside for 45 minutes. And meanwhile, I'm going to get my cocottes, mini cocottes ready. So these little guys are the mini version of what everybody gets for their wedding. You know, that uh, enamel cast iron version of the large Dutch ovens. Well, here we have one cup mini Dutch ovens. And what's so great about this is everybody gets their own personal little dinner. Yum. Okay, let me butter these, or oil these. I'm using olive oil. Let me just mention about these little guys that I just adore because they're so adorable. Um, they also come with lids, which is wonderful for presentation, but also the lids are self-basting. Okay, so I'm going to park them over here and get the rest of the ingredients together. So we're putting rosemary in. Uh, I think this will be wonderful. We, we're going to use about, oh, a tablespoon and a teaspoon. And I'm going to just chop it up. I'm mincing the garlic. I need about two teaspoons. There we go. And move on to my prosciutto. I'm going to tear the prosciutto, and this is good, good quality, prosciutto di Parma from Italy. And the reason I'm tearing is it's just very hard to cut. It all sort of bunches up together. Okay, I'm going to go drain the pasta. Time to assemble. Okay, we have here three quarters of a cup of fire roasted crushed tomatoes. I like the fire roasted because they got a little smoky taste. This is just, everything's going to get dumped in here and tossed up. We have three ounces of fontina, Italian fontina. And then we have our prosciutto. Our Parmigiano Reggiano, the real McCoy, for an ounce and a half. Oh, our garlic and rosemary. And Finally, one to two teaspoons of hot pepper flakes, half a cup of chicken broth. You need some moisture in here, obviously, because we need to end up with sort of a creamy texture on the bottom. And one and a half cups of heavy cream. There is no way really around the heavy cream. Don't try to go lighter. 
it just won't work. Heavy cream is one of the few dairy items that can will thicken on its own, particularly with the starch from the pasta. You just have to close your eyes and do it. Oh, let me add some salt and pepper since I'm tossing up anyway. Now I'm gonna transfer this mixed pasta into my little cocottes. And you know, it's a messy operation. I like to use a one cup measure because I know these hold one cup. So I'll be able to distribute all the ingredients much more easily. Now I'm gonna to top off each one with a few little slices of butter. All right, I think this looks really good. I'm gonna take them over, pop them in the oven. 450, middle shelf. 15 to 18 minutes or till it's bubbly around the edges and crispy and golden on top. Okay, let's get on to my fennel orange salad. You want something really refreshing and maybe a little acidic with this creamy dish. So I'm gonna start with the dressing and we're gonna use citrus, why not? We've got two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, two tablespoons of fresh orange juice, some grated orange rind, about a teaspoon. Remember to zest the orange before you juice it, much easier. I like adding Dijon mustard uh, to my dressings. They help to emulsify it. I've got about a half a teaspoon. And then some salt, a hefty pinch, and some pepper. And now we whisk it to make sure that the salt gets dissolved because it will not dissolve well in oil. And then we're gonna, I've got some extra virgin olive oil. This is one of those times to pull out the good stuff. And we're just gonna whisk it in. That was about three and a half tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Okay, fennel. Some people don't exactly know what it looks like. This is what it looks like. The part that you mainly use is the bulb, what's underneath here. So we're gonna need about a pound and a half of fennel. Tastes vaguely like licorice or anise. Just slice it by hand, it's fine. And as I said, it's a pound and a half trimmed. So that means after you've cut off all the parts. I'm gonna first toss this fennel with a little bit of the dressing. Okay, oh, that's gorgeous, okay. I'm gonna add a couple of cups of arugula. It's up to you, two or three cups. I like arugula. If you don't, use a different green. I just love its bitterness. It's exactly what my daughter doesn't like about it. Let's see if I can do this artfully. There we go. Okay. Very nice. And then I'm going to top it off with a few olives. I'm going to put some of this orange on top of the salad. Um, you could use sliced orange, just peel it and slice it. What I'm using today are Supremes, which are sections. Okay, I'm going to check my pasta. Wow, isn't this just amazing? Wow, it's just so wonderful. So think about this. You pop it in the oven and 15 minutes later you get this prize. This wonderful, personal pasta, crispy on the top, creamy on the bottom, deeply flavored, served with a refreshing salad, a little crusty bread. I'm gonna even put a little lid on. You can take it to the table like this, and then, ta-da! There you go. And everybody is so happy with a little bit, perhaps, of Italian wine, perhaps a Chianti. Yes. This is Julia Child. Bon appétit. Call it nostalgia, but I've been revisiting the dishes I learned when I worked on Julia Child and more company. Here we are in 1979 at the start of a 25-year friendship that changed my life. By the time I followed Julia to Good Morning America in 1981, she had become a national icon and I had become her food stylist behind the scenes. We made hundreds of dishes, but French cassoulet kind of embodies who she was, hearty and warm and a classic. to an iconic French dish, cassoulet. It was something that Julia loved that we made on the show I worked on with her. And of course, it's normally very complicated, but I've streamlined it. 
This is a weeknight cassoulet. You can make this in time for dinner on a weeknight. We start with eight chicken thighs. What I did is I, I cooked them in a tablespoon of olive oil, seasoned them first with salt and pepper, and now we're browning them on both sides. And I'm using chicken thighs because dark meat chicken just has more flavor. And uh, typically a cassoulet is made with an assortment of meats. It could be duck, preserved duck, lamb, always sausage. And they're just full bodied. And we're gonna dump off almost all of the fat. And then add our onion. And so this is just sort of our flavor base. This is one medium onion chopped, which is about one cup. We're gonna soften this a bit. And it's interesting, it's gonna sort of deglaze the pan. Sometimes you can deglaze a pan with vegetables because they have so much moisture in them, they sort of bring up all the brown bits. All right, those have gotten softened. I'm gonna add my garlic, four garlic cloves, minced. I'm adding rosemary and thyme, a teaspoon and a half of each. Now we're gonna add a little wine. Now, one of the things about Julia is she really introduced us to wine drinking it with meals, she always drank it with meals, and also cooking with it. She kept a bottle of vermouth in her refrigerator. Vermouth is a fortified white wine, so she would have wine on hand at all times to add to a recipe. And what wine does for a recipe is it's a conductor of flavor. So anytime you add alcohol to a recipe, it's just gonna taste better. All right, so while that reduces down, I just wanna get most of that raw taste of wine off of there, I'm gonna come down and talk about the port component. And we're using kielbasa. In Gascony, they would use some sort of local pork sausage. Now, I wanna thicken this stew a little bit. And what better way to thicken it than with some mashed white beans? We're gonna put in four cups of white beans. White beans are the one thing that's constant, that and some sort of pork sausage in every cassoulet that you find. But I'm gonna take out one cup of the four cups and just mash it with a good old potato masher. And then this is gonna act as the thickener. Okay, we're ready to get everything back into the pan. So we're gonna put the chicken back in. And then we're gonna add our kielbasa. Everything goes in. Just put it in between all the chicken pieces. Our regular beans, our mashed beans. Two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. I like it because it sort of adds a sharpness to it. And finally, some chicken broth. So I'm gonna add a cup and a half because you wanna make sure there's enough liquid in there so the chicken really braises nicely. All right, we're gonna bring this up to a boil, turn it down to a simmer, 15 minutes with a lid on. All right, I'm pouring a glass of Cote de Rhone to go with my cassoulet. And another thing I learned from Julia is it's very important to cook with a wine that you want to drink. And if you're gonna add the wine to the dish, well then, let it be the wine you're gonna serve with the meal. But let me tell you what else I learned from Julia. I learned many things. You must always strive for excellence. Oh my goodness, if I did not peel that asparagus, I was in trouble, so I had to learn it right away. All about excellence. You never stop learning. I mean, all the way till 92, she kept discovering new things about food. Also, that you should always have fun. Cooking is fun. Ah, wow, look at that. You see how the beans thickened it? Isn't that terrific? But we are not done. It's all about the breadcrumbs too, you know? Obsession with breadcrumbs. So I'm using panko, because I'm doing the modern method. and then just a little more olive oil, a tablespoon. Okay, so sprinkle it all over the top. And it's just supposed to add like a little crust. Okay, let me get my door open. I've got the broiler on down here. And I'm just gonna put it on the shelf. 
and it's gonna take about 30, 40 seconds to get really nice and brown. Okay, look at that, wow. That looks amazing. Okay, but that is a hot, heavy pan, so I'm gonna just go slow. I'll put two pieces on here, because uh, you, you want it to be substantial. And make sure you get some of the young heat kielbasa. And I'll have a little bit of fresh thyme. It's always nice to put a little greenery on. There we go, that looks lovely. Okay. Time to taste my perfect, quick cassoulet. It's gonna be hot, but it's gonna be yummy. So just a little tiny taste. There we go, with the, with the beans and everything. Wow, perfectly seasoned. One of my favorite segments on Sarah's Weeknight Meals is this little one we call Ask Sarah, because I get to talk to viewers from around the country and help solve their common culinary problems. Today I have Esther Rogers. Hello, Esther. From Tacoma, hello, Washington. Yes, hello. So how can we help you today? What's your question? Sarah, I enjoy using dried beans. Over the years, I've heard conflicting information. Um, salt while cooking? Don't salt while cooking. Touch a baking soda. Not really sure what that was about. And I was just really interested to have your opinion on this, what I call my bean conundrum. Million dollar question is, should you soak them? Yes, you should. Every time, if you can. They certainly will go from dry to cooked. You know, you just have to boil them longer. But what I recommend instead is for a pound of beans, cover them with four quarts of cold water and three tablespoons of kosher salt. What that will do is help them to cook more evenly, tenderize the skins and season them. What we're gonna do now is add the beans to a pot of cold water, which has been salted, and then we're gonna bring it up to a boil, turn it down to a simmer till they're done. It takes one to two hours. And then you just drain them. You can save the liquid or not save the liquid. They freeze really nicely. As for the baking soda, if you want to, you can add a pinch to the beans after they've started cooking, just a pinch. It will speed up the cooking. Troubles if you add too much, the beans will taste soapy. So Esther, does that answer your question? It does, but I do have one more question for you, please, Sarah. How long and in what form can I store them for a few days? That's an excellent question. You can keep them in the fridge, I'd say maybe up to five days. And should I store them in that liquid? Yes. In the refrigerator? Do it either way, in the liquid or not in the liquid. It's fine. They'll be fine. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's great. Thank you. And I, I just want to encourage all of you to come join me like Esther did with your culinary dilemmas. We'd love to have you on Ask Sarah. I love it when my old friend Ming Tsai stops by to cook. Oh, hello. hello. <laughs> hey, How Sarah. are you? Nice place. Nice to see you. Get you water your I know, flowers. I'm so domestic, oh, aren't I? Yeah. yeah. Those are beautiful, aren't they? My color, too. Well, I'm here to cook. Well, I'm excited. I've got some homemade chicken stock for you oh, and nice. everything. Awesome. I love duck, and I, I'm so excited we're making it, but I'm a little baffled. I like French duck cassoulet, but, oui, oui, but we are making Asian ginger orange Cassoulet. Duck cassoulet. Cassoulet in quotes. Cassoulet. So cassoulet usually has beans. Right. So my bean is the edamame. Okay. Right? But it's still classic technique, which is you have beautiful duck legs that I just seasoned. Hmm. I'm going to sear them, just a little oil. You, duck, duck has so much fat. Fat, yeah. So not even a tablespoon, just to kind of coat the pan. Just because you don't want anything to stick at all, right? So right. swirl the pan a little bit. So, uh, and by the way, here's a great tip. When you season like chicken and duck, mm -hmm. I don't need to flip them. I just do one side and put that good side down first. Uh -huh. And then once it's in the pan, then I'll season this side. 
The right? second side, right? The second side, right? And you always season before you add it. Absolutely. And why is that? You want you want the seasoning to cook into your into your protein. You don't want you don't want to just season at the end. There's a big difference in flavor and, and the levels of flavor when you season before you season after. So now I'm gonna season the back side. All I'm doing here is rendering off the delicious duck fat, right? You want me to cut the orange yeah. with the rind on? I love it. The orange turns into like orange cone feet. Yum. Delicious. So this is like a Sunday sort of comfort meal. It totally is a Sunday comfort meal. All right, I sliced a little bit of ginger we're going to add once the duck comes out. These are serrano chilies. All I do is wash them. I'm going to just take the end off, and I'm going to slice them whole down the middle, seed and all. OK, all right, This I like adds this. a little bit of heat, but all those oranges you're doing there is going to add a lot of sweetness. So. All right, Sarah, so we'll get that nice color oh, yeah. like that, right? So give these a quick flip. Again, these are not even close to being cooked through, right? These, no. are, these are raw. And you can see how much fat ended up actually in this pan. Just a little bit of duck fat you're we're going to use. So okay. give me your onions, please. Okay. And we have celery. These are carrot. I call these carrot nubs. I know. they got to call them something. They're but so weird. You know, but looking. they come clean and peeled, and you dump them. They're yeah. perfect size. They're great. They're pre-prepped. Celery in. Celery. Everything in. Now, you got to have a little bit of smoked pork, so just a couple thick slices of bacon. You don't brown it, huh? You just throw no, it in like because that? because it's going to braise. Okay. Right? You got celery. You got ginger that's been peeled, right? Good flavor Beautiful. of ginger. There's two serranos that I just have seeds and all because there's heat. And these oranges? Oranges go in. Mm -hmm. my, I, give, I give like just a little squeeze. Not okay. all the way because I want to keep this integrity. But just a little squeeze. With each one? Yep. Each okay. one. Uh, and then the edamame. That's so wild. Right? So these are not going to be green when we're done. Oh, no, they're going to be brown. So naturally brewed soy sauce, right? I don't care what brand you use. Make sure it says naturally brewed. Uh, and there's some great organic out there. And because we can, a little orange liqueur, right? Boy, this is one heck of right. a big pot. Not much more salt because I already had that soy sauce. All right, and we're done. Then we're going to take all these duck legs, make it dump back in, and then chicken stock. Okay, so we'll see what this and looks this, like. This looks like a lot, but believe you me, when all these veg and oranges it's gonna cook, cook down. it's going to cook down. Be way down. Right, okay. Give me all that stock. This is so exciting, I have to and say. And by the way, you know this. Buy your chicken stock. You can make it. This looks like homemade because you're Sarah Moulton, but the unsalted ones that you buy are aren't fine. Aren't bad, aren't right? bad. They're not Let's bad. See. Are we going top or bottom? Top of it. Okay. okay. 350. Okay. You could do this on Almost. top of the stove at a gentle yeah, simmer, totally. too. And this will okay. take about an hour, 45, two hours. Okay, you know what? We're going to have tea in my garden. A spot of tea? Yes, yes, oh, we brilliant. are. We are. After you. This is so civilized. I know. It's spot so... of tea as our duck cooks. I mean, seriously. Yes. Thank well, you. I love tea. Yeah, let me do the Japanese thing. You can't oh. serve yourself. Oh. You know, with sake, right? You never serve yourself with sake. And tea should always be served for you. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. I Cheers. love tea, but I never. I love tea. I just make it and drink it every afternoon. Although the first cup in the morning, it can't be tea. It's got to be coffee. I yeah. need that. Oh, really? So you, you go both, you're both and. Yes. I go both mm -hmm. ways. Oh, it's mm. delicious. Mm. Love it. Really good, really good. This and has you, been fun. This is so much fun. It's old reunion week. I'm glad you can still cook, Sarah. That's good to see. <laughs> oh, are you boy. Happy, are you happy that I can still cook, too? Yeah, yeah, you can. You're, really? only, you're only getting better, actually. Yeah, no, I don't know about that. Yeah, you're getting it all the time. <laughs> Let's go check our duck, don't you think? Absolutely. Okay. I'm bringing my tea. Okay, I will, too. It's going to be hot, too, so definitely take your time. Boy, I can smell it. Right? I think it's going to be good. Whoa. Oh, my God. Okay. See, how much you, see how much you reduced down, right? And look at those oranges. They do look amazing. Bring that bowl up to me, Sarah, will you? Okay. Look at that. Yeah, these oranges rock. Pour okay. a little of the broth on top. Do you, want the, do you want more meat in there, too? Yeah, sure. Okay. Come on. We're hungry people. Yeah. You know what? I've set us up for the garden. I think we'll go out and eat in the backyard. I can't wait. And we have a Pinot Noir for you. Pop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's a great Pinot Noir. I didn't invent this. The French invented, of course, Pinot Noir with duck. With this one is from Caneros in Napa Valley. Uh, love it. Give it a smell. It's like blackberry and cherry and currant. Cheers to you. Yes, cheers to you too. Thanks thank for you, Ming, me. for being here. And thank you all for watching. I hope you will try these one-pot wonders by my good buddy, Ming Tsai. 
gotta try it too I there, will, I will. I'm gonna Chef the Molten. Mm. Get in there. I'm telling you, it's about the duck, but it's also about the orange. I mean, orange slices like it's butter. Mm. Wow. Try a piece of that orange. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna try a piece of orange, straight up.